Okay, let's get this really straight. I am declaring Man of Steel to be the most disappointing movie of this past summer. Not the worst movie of the summer, not the worst Superman movie, not the worst recent DC Comics movie, not the least good Christopher Nolan movie or Zack Snyder movie or even David Goyer movie. It's not even a bad movie, it's just not an especially good movie. And given the talent of the people involved, the caliber of the material it has to draw from, and the majesty of those first few trailers, yeah, this was an extremely rare case of me letting myself get unrealistically hopeful and winding up with a big old pile of eh. And yeah, if you go back and watch the original review, it sounds a bit more positive than this. The fact is, I was only a little disappointed the first time I saw it, which was just a couple of days before the review ran. Generally, my overall assessment of a film doesn't change all that much. I work hard to keep my analytical instrument functioning well enough that I can properly cycle through the considerations and second guesses fast enough that I don't need to sit around and ruminate for a week to decide what I thought of a given movie. I mean, if I couldn't do that, I wouldn't be very much good at this job. But the spoilery big picture episode that I ran just a few days later clearly indicated that for whatever reason I had been far too generous in my original appraisal of Man of Steel. The more I thought about the movie, the less I liked it. That's never a good sign, but it turned out to be a steady phenomenon. The more thought I give this movie, the less I like it. And I'm not talking about little incidental details at this point. Superman killing Zod doesn't really work for me, but a better movie could have recovered from that. I'm sick to death of the desaturated, gloomy, joyless Christopher Nolan superhero aesthetic, but the movie had been as good as Dark Knight, it wouldn't have mattered as much. Superman doesn't really seem to care about saving people and collateral damage? Yeah, that's a legit problem, but it ties in with the bigger issue. Point is, there's a world of difference between not being the Superman movie I'd ideally like to see and being a bad Superman movie. It's also not really a grand secret why Man of Steel doesn't work overall. It has a horrible, horrible screenplay. The structure's bad, none of the characters act or talk like actual human beings or larger-than-life icons of pop mythology, and it relies on a needless and convoluted MacGuffin to drive its central conflict. The question becomes, or rather the question is, why does it have all these problems? Now, that's kind of impossible to answer definitively if you weren't there while it was being written. I mean, it's possible something heavy fell on David Goyer's head in the middle of the first draft, and that explains everything. But Occam's Razor suggests a slightly more simple possibility from where I sit. You know, there was a funny bit in an episode of King of the Hill once where Peggy summarized the behavior of newly arrived Arlen hipsters thusly. They don't know what they want, they only know what they don't want. And I think Man of Steel, at a conceptual level, is similarly afflicted. It doesn't really have a strong sense of what it's trying to accomplish, at least nowhere near as strong as its sense of what it doesn't want to be. It doesn't want to be the Richard Donner Superman. Superman. It doesn't want to be Superman Returns. It doesn't want to be the Superman of the DC Animated Universe, or even the Superman of the original comics. Which, in and of itself, is kind of troubling, since it indicates that the filmmakers are starting from the premise that the material they're adapting is somehow broken or inadequate and in need of their repair. But that wouldn't necessarily be a deal-breaker if they did have some kind of revolutionary new take on the material. But outside of a vague attempt to make Superman's alienness and non-humanity the more central aspect of his characterization, because, hey, who wants a superhero who isn't constantly morose and tormented all the time? Man of Steel doesn't really have one. It just has a lengthy list of don'ts. In the most glaring example, a constant criticism of the film has been that it's bloated with too many endless, overly violent action scenes and seems to ignore the more classical version of Superman as a character who exists to protect and rescue people in favor of an exclusive focus on his ability to punch things really hard. A creative decision that can't help but feel like an attempt to answer the criticism of Superman Returns supposedly not having enough action scenes. And this gets to the heart of the matter. To be fair, making a shallow, gritty, empty-headed, action-centric 90s-style Superman movie was probably never going to be a good idea, but if that had been the movie they'd been selling, it probably wouldn't have been such a huge letdown. Like I said, Star Trek Into Darkness was a much worse movie than Man of Steel, but it didn't look very good to begin with, and the first one was only just okay. Man of Steel was promising something else entirely, something bigger, something better. I'm not just talking about those early trailers and the story and the themes and the tone they were selling, since the movie was selling them too. The characters, Clark Kent's two father figures especially, go on and on about the idea of Superman as a symbol of hope and achievement. The staging of scenes, composition of shots, and use of music, Zack Snyder remains as ever a master of cinematic aestheticism, if not necessarily directing actors or composing a coherent story, all lean on mythic iconography sculpted specifically to reinforce the sensation that what's happening is important and means something. But it doesn't. It's like piping classical music into a Burger King and hoping it'll make the Whoppers start tasting like a $50 steak. Eventually, the dissonance starts to make the film's fundamental emptiness feel even more empty. All the Terrence Malick-style pastoral iconography in the world can't make Jonathan Kent's nonsensical, suicidally paranoid philosophizing feel like anything other than a clumsy way of dragging out the origin story. No matter how much cheap visual reference to 9-11 you pile into the battle in Metropolis, you can't make the fates of its empty, one-note characters mean anything outside of a body count. And no matter how gravely and solemnly these people intone David Goyer's tin-eared, terrible dialogue, it's never going to sound profound or affecting. In the end, Man of Steel was a movie with big aspirations, big shoes to fill, and a big game to talk, and it was a big miss on all counts. And that's why what, under other circumstances, might have been just another swing and a miss for the surprisingly difficult to get a handle on Superman franchise, turns out to be the biggest, most crushing disappointment of summer 2013. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture.